Wait, remember Skylanders Academy? Okay, well, I sure remember a lot about the Skylanders property in general. The series of games is what ended up spawning this Netflix cartoon we are talking about today. But as a lifelong Spyro the Dragon fan, I have lots to say about Skylanders. In fact, in addition to speaking about the show on this channel, over on my gaming channel, Jordan Fringe Gaming, I have posted my video taking a look through the rise and fall of the video game series for Skylanders. Think of this as a bonus two-for-one Skylanders dose of content. Skylanders Academy specifically is the animated spin-off Netflix series that tells the tale of the Skylanders becoming the Skylanders, tying directly to the characters from the game and of course the endless amounts of these things. Yeah, you can't say I didn't at bare minimum give this franchise one heck of a try. So let's dive into or rather fly up to the Skylands and see on its own how Skylanders Academy holds up. I spent way too much time between both videos watching and playing Skylanders. If you enjoy the video, you better like and subscribe. Thank you. Maybe I should just focus on the simple things in life. Similar to the games, we are brought into the world of the Skylanders by the familiar dragon we all know and love, Spyro. Now, as an OG fan of Spyro, I have never been a fan of this Funko Pop look for the character. I'll probably save my rants on that for the gaming video on the other channel, since that's where we first see him. But I just have to say, why? Using Spyro as our entry point into the show, we see him born and taken in by Master Eon, the headmaster of Skylanders Academy. There's an academy to help train all of these different and unique creatures to become Skylanders in the efforts of building up the protectors of the Skylands from evil and darkness taking over the land, mostly from Chaos and the rest of the Doom Raiders crew. The series mostly focuses on these Skylanders learning to work well with one another in defending the Skylands, all battle their own egos against one another and master their unique elemental powers, playing off the trope of a school for gifted students that we've seen countless times, but it serves as an easy enough concept to follow and get introduced to the world above the clouds. While we get a solid cast of Skylanders from the game in the show, our main core cast of Skylanders we follow are Spyro, Stealth Elf, and Eruptor. While we do get appearances and reference to other characters from the game throughout this series, they usually only play smaller or supportive roles. I'm speaking about characters based on the Imaginators or the Giants. Other major Skylanders that play decent sized roles are Jetvac, Pop Fizz, Sprocket, and of course, Cinder, who is another Spyro related character who comes from a different series of Spyro games, adding in a specific storyline about her father. And of course, just like in the video games, we get Crash Bandicoot added into the show, briefly. It was more so about putting Crash awareness back into the public zeitgeist, as the original three Crash Bandicoot games would be remade the following year, in 2017. And that franchise was gonna continue onwards on an upswing, with constant new games since. So while it may have been funny and a little cool to see, it really never added much, in my opinion, in both the game and the show when he was introduced. It did, however, remind me of these games, and I don't want to talk about it. Hey, find a way out of here fast! Skylanders Academy. You think anyone noticed me? Skylanders' popularity by 2016 was already fading pretty heavily, resulting in that year's game being the last game in the mainline series, which made it weird that this was the time you launch a cartoon tied into the games. In 2015, during Activision Blizzard's presentation for Investor Day on November 6th, they announced that they have created a subsidiary studio that will focus on bringing their properties to the film and TV medium, with Skylanders being one of their hot ticket items primed for this. By 2015, the Skylanders series had brought in over three billion dollars in sales, with the toys themselves selling over 300 million since the launch of them in 2011. Skylanders left a major impact, nearly cracking the top 10 video game franchises. It was the leader in the toys to life genre, but with Disney coming around trying to be their biggest and baddest competitor with Lego shortly following suit, and not to mention the amiibo craze for Nintendo, the market was becoming flooded. It was starting to seem a little too late for the franchise to make a jump to a TV show. From 
from the gaming space. If this had more forward thinking and was done during the second or even third year of Skylanders being a full-fledged property, right in the middle of its heightened success, this could have helped boosted the franchise on both sides of the coin. More attention to the video games and more eyes on the show itself. Originally, Activision Blizzard Studios would strike a deal with Netflix to bring two seasons of a show based on Skylanders to the platform, with a third season that was added on with the initial success and interest for the show. Now, putting any thoughts that I have towards the game aside and separate for that video on my other channel, I must say that the show overall isn't that bad. While I have my issues with Spyro's looks and how he acts in the show, it doesn't dampen my full viewing experience. While I'd say the front half of season one has a pretty slower and more uninteresting start, the show starts to find its groove from there and carries that on throughout the rest of the series. It constantly has a nice balance of comedy and story where it didn't feel too bloated in each direction. While some of the jokes do skew more juvenile, there was some moments that genuinely got a solid laugh out of me, but the focus of the show truly got more fascinating and more engaging when we would focus on chaos or any of the bad guys in the show, giving more compelling stories and the comedy specifically between chaos and glumshanks. I think that also really boils down to the voice talent of the show, because holy moly did they get a pretty fun cast to fill it up. Justin Long is Spyro, Ashley Tisdale is Stealth Elf. Jonathan Banks is Eruptor. Walter. I'm in Skylands, Walter. Chris Diamantopoulos is Master Eon. Greg Ellis is Jetvac. Bobcat Goldthwait is Pop Fizz. Gray Delisle is Sprocket. Richard Stephen Horvitz is Chaos. Norm McDonald's is Glumshank. And Felicia Day is Cinder. There's so many more talented and well-known actors that have smaller roles or bit roles throughout the series. It's just stacked. Speaking of Cinder, I really like how they incorporated her into the show. Her story brings in her relationship with her father, Malifor. The evil Dragon King and how we see her struggle with becoming an evil dragon like her father, or forge her own path and fight for what she believes is right, when she seeks out to become a Skylander. Her relationship with Spyro is very playful and has this nice, fun rivalry between them that helps bring the best out in each other. But what I enjoyed most and thought was a cool direction for the third season of the show was Spyro turning evil, being captured and corrupted by being robbed of his light energy, fully becoming Dark Spyro, trying to blend in back with the Skylander without getting caught. All of this leading up to the rest of the team coming together to gather and use a serum to restore Spyro back to his regular old purple and good-natured self. But this causes the embodiment of Dark Spyro to become its own entity in which the two clash and battle until the end. It was exciting and engaging. While I think the action in the show does come off pretty stiff more often than not, the way the stories would unfold being told from both the Skylanders and the bad guys was truly a huge delight and worth sitting through the action to get through. The animation on its own looks fantastic. Keyword is looks. There just seems to be something that holds back the movement during the action. It's just moments and things like that that start taking me out of the show a bit. Another thing is the music in the show is very bland, generic, and uninspired. At least to me. This is from the get-go apparent when the theme song of the show is just this random pop bubblegum song, which is one of my least favorite genres of music. Again, this is based on me and my experience, so please, by all means, if you love that kind of music, I'm so happy for you. But as someone who usually doesn't skip intros from shows when I'm watching them, here I was hitting skip intro almost immediately every time. Within the show, there's just this lack of whimsy that feels right for this mystical world. Just some extra layer that would make me feel something, but it just wasn't doing it for me. The show itself, though, is fine. Like I said, it continued to get better and more enjoyable with fun characters, some good plot, and a voice cast that made me want to keep watching through the series. It definitely isn't for everyone, but I do like that it never felt unfair or uninviting to those who didn't play the games or even liked them. It stands as its own separate thing that I believe anyone can find some enjoyment out of, which is not easy to do being tied in so heavily with a franchise that comes from a different entertainment medium. And with an ending that both closes out season three and slightly leaves the door open for more, what happened to Skylanders Academy? Uh, what's going on? Power, you don't, don't want to know. Is your head edible? <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out. Glum dog, how much bling is too much bling? 
Now, Netflix is known for dropping shows fairly quickly, either with low views or no longer having interest after a few seasons. The latter seems to be the case here, as after three seasons of Skylanders Academy, the show was announced officially over with no fourth season coming, which in a way makes some kind of sense. When the series started in 2016, it released right around the same time as the sixth mainline game in the series, Skylanders Imaginators. The Toys to Life era for gaming was winding down and Activision's interest with characters like Spyro and Crash Bandicoot were fully back into making them their own standalone games and out of the Skylanders branding. With no gaming aspect to promote and coincide with the TV show, it didn't seem like the show was looked at as its own thing, despite running for two years more than the games lasted. Sure, there was a decline in viewership, but that was mostly attributed to the fatigue of the amount of Skylanders games, and then the drought of games after the first season of the show, especially as the genre of gaming was ending and the era of Battle Royale games were beginning. Where is my Fortnite cartoon at? Another thing to point out is that the show itself, again, wasn't bad. In fact, the reviews for it were pretty high among both fans of the game and just casual viewers of the show only. Often praised for the animation work and something that I took notice of the most, the texture work on the 3D models. The shine that gleams off Spyro, the coarse rocky exterior of Eruptor, just the whole look of the show feeling something more akin to Disney. While I don't love the Skylanders franchise as a whole, the series itself was a nice breakaway from the games. I like that so many consistencies from the games carried over, like some voice actors and of course the characters in general, from the Skylanders themselves to the villains of the game. Would I say that Skylanders Academy is a modern masterpiece? Definitely not. But it is a surprisingly enjoyable adventure that can stand on its own separate from the games. Yeah, completely. In fact, I think it's the best thing that came from the Skylanders franchise, but that's just me. Did you watch Skylanders Academy? Did you enjoy it? Let me know in the comments. But don't forget, there's a whole other counterpart and unquestionably larger component to Skylanders, the video games. There were a lot of them. They came out yearly and led the charge for the brief several year stint of Toys to Life video games. So head over to my Jordan Fringe Gaming channel to deep dive the gaming side of the franchise. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, later.